Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to create stars inside of Photoshop. We're going to be creating two brushes in this video that we're going to be using in two more tutorials that are coming up after this one. So pretty much this is going to be part one of a two or three part series. So let's go ahead and get started with the star brushes. We're going to use this as the canvas to create these brushes. Now when you're creating brushes inside of Photoshop, anything that's white is not going to register. So this is basically blank. So we're going to be using black. So I'm going to uh, make sure that black is my foreground color. Anything in black is going to register. We're not making black stars. It's just the color that we're using to register. So completely black is going to be opaque and any gradation in that color will show up but it's it's going to show up a little bit differently which is what we're going to use to help us create the stars so let me just start so you get the idea of what i'm talking about here okay so i'm going to come here to the brush tool and i'm going to start here with legacy brushes these are the photoshop default brushes and inside there i'm coming here to this folder called default brushes and I'm using this one right here. It's the soft round brush. It's always the very first brush. So I'm going to bring up the size of this to about 150 pixels for this size document. Let me go ahead and uh, close that. And all I'm going to do with this is just click once. So I'm going to have this little blurry ball here. And this blur is going to be very important to this brush because we want it to look like it's glowing. So we want this transparency to it so it's going to be very concentrated in the center the dark color and then around it will um, kind of fade out into nothing which is going to simulate that light effect and actually i did this on the background so let me undo that add a new layer here and i'm just going to do the same thing there so i'm just adding that there but it does need to be on a separate layer because now we're going to press the letter v on the keyboard and we're going to start moving this around. So if you had it on the background, it, this would not work. So just make sure that it is on a new blank transparent layer. Hit the letter V on the keyboard to bring up all of these anchors. And then we're just going to smash that down to about 20 pixels. And I'm going to drag it out to about a thousand pixels. And again, that's just for this size document. If you have a smaller document, it doesn't have to be this big. But what I want is that super opaque area right here and then I want this kind of coming out into nothing over here. So I'm going to press the option key on my keyboard and you'll see those two little arrows right there. Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC and you'll see those two arrows and you can just drag down. That's just going to duplicate that layer for you. I'm going to press the shift key on my keyboard and you see that little bent double arrow there. Holding down the shift key is just going to help you move this in increments of 25. So I want it at 90 degrees for this one and I want to make sure that my centers are aligned. So I'm going to come here, hold the shift key and grab that second layer. I'm going to bring that up. Letter V on the keyboard to bring up all of my controls here and I'm going to align these horizontally, vertically just to make sure that my centers are perfect. Now I'm going to come here and add a new layer on top of all of this. B on the keyboard. I'm not changing the size of this at all. Um, it's all pretty basic, 100% opacity, flow 100%, everything is the same. I'm just going to come here to the center of that star and I'm just going to click it again. Actually, I'm going to click it a couple of times. And you can make this bigger if you like. It just depends on what you prefer. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this size. I'm not going to merge these or do anything with this. It doesn't matter how many layers you have here on the side when you're creating a brush. It only matters what is on the screen. So anything that is black or in gradation right here, unless it's completely white, it's going to show up. It's just going to show up with transparency, you know, these areas right here. So I'm going to come here to edit, define brush preset, and we're going to call this star one. I'll click OK. So now we have our first star and it's huge, but uh, we're going to adjust that when we adjust the settings. So now what I'm going to do is make star number two. So I'm going to grab this layer. So these are just these light rays here on the side. I'm going to hold the shift key, grab the first one, grab the second one and right click duplicate. I'm not going to name these. I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to end up deleting them anyway. I'm going to 
press the letter V on the keyboard to bring up those controls. And again, hold the shift key. When you see that little bent double arrow there, you can just bring this out to 45 degrees. And you can leave it as it is. I'm gonna shrink mine in a little bit. So I'm gonna hold the shift and option key, shift and alt key to drag this in, but still keep my center. So I'll leave it about right there. So you can see it's aligned with the outside here, but it's smaller. I'm gonna press enter. And this is gonna be my second brush right here. So I'm gonna to go to edit, define brush preset, and I'll call this star two. And we're gonna start creating the brushes. So what I'm gonna do is hold the option key and delete just to fill my background with that foreground color black. That's gonna be alt delete on a PC or alt backspace. And then I'm gonna press the letter X cause I do want my foreground color now to be white. I'm gonna add a new layer right here and I'm gonna come into the brushes that I just created. So I'm gonna come here to star one and then I'm gonna come here to the brush settings. So if you don't have your brush settings icon here, you'll come up here to window and just choose brush settings there. Now these settings are gonna be very basic for this brush. So I'm gonna leave that about uh, 60 pixels is fine. And then I'm gonna set my, my spacing up to about 200 or so. It doesn't have to be you know exactly like mine, but you do want it spaced out. Now we're gonna come here to shape dynamics. So I'm gonna take my size jitter way up because I do want some stars to look like they're really far behind and then some that look like they're uh, more you know, forward. And then my angle jitter, I'm gonna also take all the way up to 100% because I really do want that to be random. For the roundness jitter, this is really gonna be up to you. Basically makes them look like they're tilted on their side. I don't know if you can see that, but it just kind of looks like they're off to one side. I'm gonna leave that at zero. But if you like that look, you can work with the roundness jitter there. Now I'm gonna come here to scattering and I'm gonna scatter this about 400 percent we'll see what that looks like so that's what the stars look like at 400 percent scatter if you click both axis then you'll get them much closer together and you can see this more when i added the count so i brought up the count to two if i undo both axes you'll see that they're just much more spread apart that way i'm going to go ahead and keep both axes checked and you can spread these even further we can even go up to about uh, let's see what 700 looks like. We'll leave it scattered to 700. We're gonna leave our count at two and we can even work with the count jitter a little bit because we really do want this to be pretty random. So I'll go ahead and leave that. And then I have smoothing checked off and that's pretty much it for this brush. I'm gonna come here to the three little lines and I'm gonna choose new brush preset. I'm gonna call this star 1.1 scatter. So this is just a reference to my base design that I created or my base brush that I created, star one. And I know that I you know, made adjustments to that base and now uh, I'm just adding you know, kind of how I would use this as a scatter brush. So I'm gonna click okay. Now we're gonna go to the second brush here. So we'll go to star number two. It is basically, we're gonna be doing the same thing with this one, but I wanted to show you a couple of other things. The spacing doesn't really matter. I'm gonna show you how to make the stamp brush first. So let me let me give you an idea of what this looks like. Let's bring this back up. Okay, so if you have a brush like this and you're stamping, and you see how they all look exactly the same, well, what we're trying to do with this stamp brush is uh, make sure that every time you stamp, you're getting something like a, a change of variation on that brush. So what I'm gonna do is come here to shape dynamics. I'm right here, I'm not worried about spacing at all. Uh, I'm gonna leave it pretty big so you can see the difference here, but we're gonna come here to shape dynamics and I'm gonna change my size jitter. I'm gonna bring that all the way up. I'm gonna change my angle jitter. That one's going all the way up as well. So when I come back in here, you can see I'm getting uh, very different variations of that same stamp. So that's what I want for my stamp brush. I don't want something like this where it's all exactly the same thing. And that's pretty much it for that. I have smoothing checked off for this one as well. I'm gonna come here to the three lines and then choose new brush preset. And this is gonna be star two, 2.1. 
and I'm just gonna put here stamp so I know what it is or how I'm gonna use it so that's our second brush let's go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff here and I'm gonna use that same uh, brush number two to create another brush so I'm gonna come here to brush tip shape and this time I am gonna take my spacing uh, I'm gonna take it up to about 200 or so I'm gonna bring this down we'll just go ahead and leave it at 75 um, and then I'm going to come here to shape dynamics I'm leaving this as it is uh, size jitter 100% I do want that feeling of depth right here that you're getting with the small stars and the larger stars and on my angle jitter I am leaving at 100% and everything else is going to stay as it is I'm going to come here to scatter and I am scattering this Click on both axes because I do want that and I'm going to take my count to two. The count can be one or two, it just depends on what look you're going for. If you want uh, you know, more stars then we'll go with two. If you want less the, you can keep the count at one. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this one at two and I have my smoothing checked off. I'm going to come here to the three lines, new brush preset. This one is star uh, 2.2 and I'm just going to call this scatter so I know how I'm going to be using it. So I'm going to click OK. So if you come back to the brushes, we now have our star 1 and star 2. We have star 1.1, which is a scatter brush, star 2.1, this is our stamp, and then star 2.2, which is a scatter. So I'm going to do one more with this one and you can do the same thing with the other one. I'm just going to show it to you once. If you're creating something with these stars where you need a lot of reflection of light like on diamonds and things like that. So I've shown you how to make something similar to this before in another video, the diamond texture video. I'll go ahead and leave a link if you're interested in how I made the diamond texture because when you have something like a diamond it does reflect light but it's not all going to be the same color sometimes if you're using these star brushes for um, to, you know to show shine and reflection then you also need some color so what I'm going to do is come here to color dynamics let me go ahead and get rid of all that so this is what the brush looks like right now and we have our foreground back our foreground color is white, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to, let's do a blue. And you can see that with this brush, I can do the blue, but I want to add more color. So I'm going to add this color dynamics here. I'm going to make sure that it's applying per tip. I My foreground and background jitter are at 100%. You can adjust this depending on what you want. And the one thing I do always keep at zero is the purity. So this really affects the saturation of the colors and I'd rather just have control of that here with my foreground and background versus over here. So I usually just leave that at zero but I'm going to change my background to maybe like a yellow color. Uh, what you're going to get is something like this. So you're getting all that rainbow reflective color and you don't have to stamp out all of these different colors or do any of that and it's all random and nice. So that's one thing you can do. You can work with saturation, brightness, hue. Uh, I'm going to take down my hue to zero and I'm just going to get these two colors right here where when I had that hue all the way up I was getting more, you know, larger variety of colors there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this brush, a new brush preset and I'm going to call this star two dot three and this one is scatter color so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK so if you're interested in brush making inside of Photoshop I do have an entire playlist of uh, different brushes that we've created here on the channel from glitter to confetti watercolor all of those things so if you're interested in that I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description for you and up here in the corner as well and don't forget to come back next week where we're going to apply these brushes to a shimmery glitter animation inside of Photoshop as well. So we're going to be creating a template that you can use with all of your images. And then I have one more coming up after that using these star brushes as well. If you like this video and you found it at all helpful, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. All of those things really do help me to keep creating videos and to make sure that 
as many people as possible are going to be able to see these videos. So if you can do any or all of those things, it would be greatly appreciated. And also visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.